All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Boulder, Colorado by Deborah Fryer. Dr. Deborah Fryer, how are you doing? I'm great. How about you? Yeah, I'm fantastic as well. And and you are, uh, Dr. Deborah, you're so many things, a transformational coach, filmmaker, um, yogini, and chef. And in your spare time, you don't have any spare time. <laughs> That's a lot of things. But today we're going to, we're going to talk more on the, uh, on the uh, transformational coaching side, because we're going to talk about mindset, but we're going to talk about mindset and money. And I think this is something that a lot, a lot of people struggle with is they don't realize how much their mindset impacts, not all areas of their lives, but certainly, um, you know, it can, it, it can impact their attitude to money. And therefore, your attitude to money kind of dictates money's relationship with you. Would that be correct? Yeah, it does. I would say that our mindset affects everything about us. It affects mm -hmm. our health, it affects our income, it affects our relationships. And money is a beautiful mirror for seeing uh, parts of yourself that you uh, may or may not be in right relationship with. Ah, that's a that's a, that's a very interesting comment. So do you want to elaborate on that? How it's a, money can be a mirror for 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 parts of yourself that's that's a very interesting insight well you know i sometimes invite people to think about somebody that you've been in a relationship with that has been a very frustrating relationship and uh, most if not all of us have had a relationship at some time in our lives perhaps it was with a family family member uh, perhaps it was with a beloved earlier in life perhaps it was with uh, a boss or an employee we've all had some relationship that we have found very vexing and it's been frustrating and we don't exactly know how to navigate it so i ask people well what are some of the qualities of this relationship and they'll come out with oh well i feel like he never paid me any attention or he was always late or he was controlling everything or I just didn't feel the love. And mm -hmm. whatever the, the stuff is that uh, shows up in a relationship, then I will help them see, oh, and is this also showing up in your relationship with money? So for example, someone will say, oh, I feel like he doesn't pay me very much attention. Well, is it showing up that you feel like money isn't paying you very much attention? Mm. Oh, he always makes me wait. Is it showing up that you're always having to wait for money? Is it showing up that you feel like you have to chase down clients who are late with payments? Do you feel like money shows up when it feels like, but you can't count on it? Do you feel like money's untrustworthy? And we start seeing some of these dynamics that we unconsciously have in relationships with other humans. Mm that we're projecting those exact same things onto our relationship with money, where we often feel um, if we're struggling with money, that we're controlled by money, that money doesn't respect us, that money exists in a very conditional way. If I do this, then I will get that. And, and so it creates a whole bunch of confusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and obviously, I mean, some of this uh, comes as well from you know how you grew up what your you know, your family circumstances your parents attitude to money all of that thing and and we carry a lot of that stuff with us but we unfortunately sometimes never recognize where it came from in the first place until we do you know what you what you said is spot on that we've all absorbed certain values and certain beliefs about money, about how hard you have to work for your money, about how much money you can make, about ooh, rich people do da da da, or it's greedy if I do da da da. And we unconsciously absorb those beliefs and those habits and those values, and then we start living them as if we chose them. And I think that a lot of the people that I work with haven't realized why they're struggling with money until they start uncovering the deeper layers. And then they realize, oh, well, my dad worked a million hours that's why i do because i just thought mm -hmm. that you have to work really really hard uh or it might be you know 
my dad or my mom work nights and weekends and they never had any time for us. And all of a sudden you find yourself working nights and weekends and never having time for yourself or never having time for mm -hmm. your family. And then you realize, oh, that's what I'm doing. Uh, it might be that, you know, you have somebody who worked at a job they hated and they made great money mm -hmm. and they took care of the family, but they hated their job. And so unconsciously, you've got this belief that says, the only way I can make money is if I hate my job. It's okay right. to hate your job. In fact, you're supposed to hate your job and you get paid well for doing something you hate. I have a lot of clients who come to me with this exact mindset, which is I'm making great money and I hate my job. And what are you willing to trade your time for? You know, there are right. people who right. feel like they can't make money doing what they love because the belief says, no, you can make money doing what you hate. So you can't make yeah. money doing what you love. I work with a whole bunch of starving artists and writers and mm -hmm. makers and people who are super creative, who love the creative stuff that they're doing, but they've got the belief that says, I can't be paid for this thing that I love because I got to be yeah. paid for what I hate. Yeah. What also tracks with that is along with, I can make a lot of money doing what I hate. I can work a bajillion hours and make a lot of money doing what I hate. The corollary is not allowed until you unhook from that old belief. The corollary is I can make money having fun because we mm. think work has to be hard and it has to take all your time and fun. You don't get paid for. And right. I'm on a mission to help people realize now you can get paid doing what you love. It can be fun for you. It can be easy for you. And whatever is easy for you is going to be hard for somebody else. So yeah. when you realize that you can start marketing and selling and sharing <laughs> whatever it is that's easy for you because it's easy for you and it's hard for them. And if it's hard for them, they want it. They're going to pay for it because they want the thing that's hard for them. And we all invest in what's hard for us. That's easy for other people. And in a way, this is how the, the marketplace works is everyone has a yeah. skill that they're good at and everybody has stuff that they're not very good at that they want to pay somebody to help them with. Yeah. You know, these are, there's so many great points that you made there that I just wanted to uh, come back on. I, I think part of it too, is that we often just postpone everything, right? When we say, okay, I hate my job pays me a lot of money, but in, in a couple of years time, I'll have saved enough or I'll have earned enough or whatever, then I can do something else. Then I can. And so we're always kind of, we're always like at an arm's length from ourselves, right? We're always that bit in the future rather than like looking to see whether I can make the changes now. And I think we talk ourselves out of making changes by saying, well, maybe just another year. Yeah, that's such a dangerous mindset. That thing about, oh, that thing that it happens in the future, then mm -hmm. I will. Because what we're unconsciously saying to ourselves is, I don't deserve it now. We're unconsciously mm -hmm. saying, oh, when I have the money, then I'll do X, Y, Z. And yep. then we're telling ourselves, I don't deserve it before I have the money. And what we're missing, there's so many things we're missing when we do that. One thing that we're missing when we say that is, I'm not going to deserve it until I have the money as if money is the arbiter of your deservingness. Money does mm -hmm. not make you deserving or undeserving. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not from that belief that money makes you deserving. No, you're deserving right now. Yeah. No. And, and the other point I wanted to come back to as well was what you just said about doing things that are easy and that you love. Um, I often talk about this. I think we have it so backwards in, in, in corporate life uh, is if, if you notice when most people do like um, performance reviews or anything like they'll be they'll be told a couple of things that they're doing well and then they'll be told all of these things that oh, you need to improve on this this and this and this and we as humans and civilly in court in in business we tend to we tend to focus on the deficiencies of people instead mm. of looking at saying yeah i mean if somebody came to me and said yeah listen john you're absolutely rubbish at this but you're really good at this so i'm going to figure out how i'm going to get you to be able to do more of this because the contribution to the company is going to be so much more but instead <laughs> we're all and i think then we do it to ourselves then we think we're incomplete yeah. And I think what also tracks with that is, okay, you're really good at that and you're rubbish at that. Well, if you're really good at that, do more of that. Like yeah. I don't see the yeah. value in becoming really good yeah. at something I'm not naturally very good yeah. at. And, I, and, you'll, and, and you'll never probably become good at, you might become decent at it. Right. But I'd like to hire somebody who's really good at the thing I'm not really yeah. good at so that I can focus on what I'm good at and what's easy for me and what's fun for me. And 
when I hire somebody to do the thing they're really good at that supports me doing what I'm good at, it's a win-win for everyone. It actually allows me to serve more people doing what I'm good at, to reach more people doing what I'm good at. And neurologically, if I'm trying to do things that don't come easily to me, it actually slows me down and it creates a bit of stress and a lot of resistance because it's not something that I'm naturally good at. Like for me, technology is not something I'm naturally good at. I'm really good at the inner tech, but the computer tech and the automation of everything that needs to happen to be an online entrepreneur, I hire people to manage all the tech because they're good at that. And it frees me up to do the mindset work that I'm good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the other thing you mentioned that I just wanted to come back on too, which is it's interesting as well, is the idea of you know, money being the validator, right? So that's how we validate. If we oh. have enough money, we're getting enough money. That's validating everything we're doing. And we're giving we're giving a lot of power to money, but we're uh -huh. also not looking at looking at it for what it actually really is. And that is just it it it's a means. It's a means to an end, really, at the end uh -huh. of the day. That's what money is. Yeah. And I think that it being a means to an end part of the danger of being very future oriented of saying when I make X amount mm -hmm. of dollars, when I close X amount of sales, when I, whatever the goal is, then I will feel a certain thing about myself. The, the danger about that is if we're always focused on something that's not happening, we're never focused on what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And that really undermines our power. It really undermines our confidence because we're coming from a place of I'm not there yet. I'm not enough yet. Right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're somehow insisting on our insufficiency. If we're over there where I'm not yet, then I'm never fully here. I'm only partly here. Right. So I'm never 100% present. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too, I guess, is that is, is your attitude to, to the world. I mean, whether you have an abundant mindset or a finite mindset, I mean, that's a lot of it too, is I think, well, all these other people have made loads of money. There's none left for me, right? Instead oh. of like looking at it like there's plenty of there's you know there's 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 infinite opportunity out there if you have an abundant mindset. Um, but often we we just think, okay, well that's all taken. I'm you know I'm probably where I deserve to be. Oh my gosh, it's such a painful mindset. My my attitude to that, <coughs> excuse me, and that comes from the part <laughs> of me that loves cooking, is make a bigger pie. Right. It's such mm -hmm. a finite mindset to say there's only a limited amount of money. And now more than any time in my life, we're seeing businesses explode all over the Internet. There are all mm -hmm. different kinds of things that people do that are creative ways for making money. And your contribution, your unique perspective, your unique experience, your unique expertise is adding to the marketplace. And I think when you realize that your contribution, the value you're adding is the thing that makes a bigger pie, it, it helps you unhook from, oh, there's only a finite amount. You're actually creating more opportunity by whatever it is that you're offering, whether it's a product or a good or a service or an online or a brick and mortar, you're contribution whatever you're creating is creating value that somebody will want and and i guess the other part too is that uh if you if you have these limiting mindsets when you do get your money say you get your you know you make your commission you get your bonus whatever and you're happy for a few for a little bit but then it's not it's it doesn't give you the sense of satisfaction that you thought it would so therefore um, you probably default to thinking, well, that's because it wasn't that big a bonus. Maybe, you know, if I got a bigger one, it would be more. But it's that idea of there's something you want, but when you get it, it doesn't have the impact that you thought it would. Well, that's also related to a way that we give our power to money, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. if you think that money is going to give you X, Y, Z, money's going to make me feel happy, money's going to make me feel confident, then money's responsible for you feeling confident. So when you have money, you feel confident. And when you don't have money, if money's responsible for you feeling confident, when you don't have money, you're not gonna feel confident. So you're not actually in control of your own emotional state. You're not actually fully self-responsible. And that creates 
a, a great dis-ease, a great discomfort, uh, you know, as, as a being, if you're not fully responsible for your results, if you need money to feel confident or to feel successful or whatever the feeling is that you thought you were going to feel when you had the money, you haven't fully owned your your humanity, right? You've kind of outsourced it and let yep. money be the arbiter. Again, there's that word of, of we give money a lot of power that it shouldn't have over us. Money shouldn't get to dictate, do you feel confident or not? Do you feel good about yourself or not? Yeah, you know, it's 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 so fascinating that the way we the way we do things like that and the way as you said the way we outsource uh it's like it's like you know people who have no goals or strategy just outsourcing your life to fate uh, right. as well. Um and I, and I think the the other thing about about money is I I I just think we well no one thing I wanted to come back to is the self responsibility part that you just talked about there, because I think that's one of the most liberating things you can do is to start to become personally accountable for your life. And yes, things happen, things happen that are no fault of your own, but how you react to them is, is totally, you know, down to you. And we put ourselves in those situations. Like if you're in a bad relationship, Hey, it's your fault. You're staying in the bad relationship or whatever. Um, but taking taking personal responsibility and accountability, people think that's scary, but it's actually f absolutely liberating because of just what you said. You are now responsible. Therefore, if you're responsible, you are you're able to do something about it. Yeah. Well, let's bring it full circle. So if you're in a bad relationship, you can say, oh, it's my fault. I'm staying in a bad relationship. Why are you staying in the bad relationship? You're getting something from it right? And if you're hoping the other person's going to change, we always hear this relationship advice, if you're hoping the other person's going to change, good luck, because, mm -hmm. you know, they're the way they are, you can change your re response to them. If you're in a bad relationship with money, where you feel like money has all the power, money is controlling you, money is manipulating you, you're making your decisions based on how money is going to show up or not show up for you. <laughs> you know, Think about if you were in a relationship like that, would you want to be in that relationship or would you want to break up and be in a relationship mm -hmm. where you're feeling honored, where you're feeling respected, where you're excited, where you're feeling like you have a joyful collaborator in life? And money is that. Money is energy that uh, it gets to flow through us so that we can contribute more. It gets to flow through us so that we can help more people and 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 enjoy more ease and really contribute the, to the global economy in ways that we can't if we're going to insist on our insufficiency and our scarcity. Yeah, you know, I love that. And if there's one thing for people to take away today is is that that the, the money is like an, an energy, it's a fuel, it's something. I mean, that's it's, it's such a different way of looking at things. And uh, I just think that's that's something for people to take away. Because yeah, if you change the way you look at it, and what it represents for you, then it suddenly becomes something that's, that's positive in your life. Yeah. I mean, what if money were to represent, wow, I've sold this many books or wow, I've helped mm -hmm. this many people or wow, I've started a foundation. You know, what if it represented the contribution that you're making? Um, yeah, because if that's the case, no, that I, I, I really I, I love that because now you're attaching your attaching the value to it if you like you're setting the stage here you're saying what it represents as opposed to either letting you know legacy thoughts or external forces uh, uh dictate what it means to you yeah yeah i think it really is about changing our identity with relationship to money so that we're not reacting to it. We're not defining our identity in terms of how much money we make or don't make, how much money we owe or don't owe. None of those things is really the truth of who you are. And so it's it's uh, really an opportunity to do deep inner work around your own value, your own worth, and what are you contributing to the world? Yeah, and I think that's a great point because I, I think unfortunately not an, we don't do that enough. We don't take a time. And we live in a weird culture now where, you know, it's you're interrupted all the time. Everything is, you know, you're being bombarded and it's almost like it's it's almost like it's become um, 
it's it's not even applicable to take time out because you have to be connected all the time and you can't be with yourself and the whole world is designed to make sure that you never spend any time with yourself. Well, I totally agree with you. Nothing more important than taking time for yourself. Yeah, and absolutely. The messages that we've gotten that say you don't matter if you don't make money. You know, I think it's a real disservice and so disrespectful to so many people who are contributing greatly and they're not being remunerated greatly. You know, some of the most important things that I believe we can do right now, things having to do with education, things having to do with being good stewards of the planet. Uh, these things are not always remunerated at the highest level, and yet they create the most value for future generations. Yeah, listen, great, uh, great way to end today. Listen, uh, Deborah, this has been fantastic. Uh, before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Well, I love talking about and sharing and teaching money mindset. So uh, I do have a, a free book that's available. It's called Turn on Your Tap. And it's a tap, it's a book that looks at the neuroscience of EFT tapping, emotional freedom technique tapping, and how you can use this mind body tool to release stress and anxiety around money so that it can naturally flow to and through and from you. Fantastic. Um, all of uh, Deborah's information will be below this video. Uh, listen, thanks again, Deborah. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you.